Bloody Roar is going to return. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But before we get to that, let's go back in time. Let's look at things in retrospect and make sense of all of this. When Hudson Soft went defunct in 2012, there was a note that came out from someone named Morgan Harrow. This is what he had to say. A special note goes to the fans demanding a return of the Bloody Roar series. It was something I personally pushed for in the company despite the crowded fighting game market. With digital distribution channels like Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network, I felt there was a chance, if done right, to reinvigorate the series. Pause. This makes sense, given that Bloody Roars 1 and 2 are on the PlayStation 3's PlayStation Network store. They were released by Sony and Hudson Soft before Hudson Soft went defunct. So those are legacy releases, so Konami's not getting a profit off of those re-releases. Let's continue. There were some game design documents sent around internally of some spin-offs of the series, but it didn't seem like it was the right direction. There was a chance for something to happen late 2011, early 2012, but clearly, we won't see what was to be. To the Bloody Roar fans out there, I read every single one of your messages, petitions, and calls for the series to be brought back. You guys are awesome, and perhaps someday, a developer and a publisher will pick it up and do it justice. Until then, just know, you guys rock. Pretty heartfelt message to the Bloody Roar community. However, there is one more thing that I need to point out that was in this note. And it was when he said that there was a chance for something to happen late 2011, early 2012. And then he says, we won't see what was to be. Now, he obviously said that because that note coincided with the context of Hudson Soft shutting down. So Hudson Soft shutting down means that all of their projects got canceled. <clears throat> Which unfortunately means that Bloody Roar 5 or that new entry, that next entry after Bloody Roar 4, just eight to nine years later, it got canned. That's why we never got anything. That's why we never got a new Bloody Roar game after that. It's because Hudson Soft went defunct and it was canceled. But there's another reason as to why. You see, let's move on to 2020. I was in a Discord call chilling with a friend of mine. And I discovered the Bloody Roar trademark was being tampered with by Konami Digital Entertainment, which was why I ended up doing that video talking about it. And then I made a tweet about it. And then that tweet blew up. And then Maximilian did a video showcasing the tweet. And he highlighted that part of his stream, I assume, and then used 98% of my thumbnail on his video talking about it. And uh, it was a big topic, right? A lot of people shared the sentiment that Konami's only doing it because they want to protect the property because they own it. They want to protect the property so that no one else can use it. And yes, that makes a lot of sense. But you have to remember that the company that did own it was Hudson Soft. They are the ones that owned it. Konami. Eight years later, after 2012, after Hudson Soft shut down, are finally starting, beginning the process of securing the rights of the property. And I don't think a lot of people realize how important this is. Because what people need to understand is, once again, Konami's not making a profit off of the PSN re-releases of Bloody Roars 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 3. Sony is, since Hudson Soft is defunct. Konami didn't do anything with Bloody Roar because they couldn't. Because they have to prove that they own Bloody Roar as a result of them absorbing Hudson Soft as a result of the merger. That is why we never got anything, because even as a corpse, the ghost of Hudson Soft still had Bloody Roar in the spirit realm, essentially. That, that's why we didn't get anything. We didn't get Bloody Roar 5 because Hudson Soft shut down. We didn't get anything even after Konami absorbed Hudson because they never went through the process of getting the license. 
It's not a matter of, oh, they're only doing it just so that they own it so that nobody else could use it. No, duh. Logically speaking, if they absorbed Hudson and Hudson owned Bloody Roar, they have to get it, especially if they see that there is a demand for it. So it makes sense. The other sentiment that people like to share is, oh, they're going to be doing a pachinko machine, blah, 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 blah. No, they're not because it was registered under class nine, which pre-recorded software in hard form, CD-ROMs, diskettes, magnetic tapes, etc. are in this class with an indication of the subject matter or function of the software. There's probably a different definition out there, but basically what that means is it's for things you can download, pre-recorded software or, 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 or games. It doesn't have anything to do with arcade machines, patchy slots, all that crap. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything when it comes to that. And to the one person that's probably thinking, oh, just because it's not registered under Apache slot class doesn't mean they can't do it. Okay, you're right, but you're really only saying that just to be a pessimist, and I don't need that. I don't really care. You could keep that. That's you. I don't care. So 2020, the trademark stuff starts to buzz, right? And then it wasn't until August 22nd, 2023, that they finally got the rights for good. Konami secured the rights for the Bloody Roar trademark. Which means they can actually do something now with the property. They couldn't before because they didn't go through the legal process of proving that they own it as a result of absorbing Hudson Soft. That's why we didn't get anything because they never went through the process of doing it. I'm just reiterating that because people are assuming that Konami was just sitting on it and not doing anything with it when there's actually a reason as to why they weren't doing anything with it. Now, do I think that they should have taken... 11 years after they absorbed Hudson Soft to finally get the right secured? No. They should have did that a decade ago. There's probably Bloody Roar fans that are dead by now that wanted a new entry but couldn't get it, unfortunately, because Konami was being slow. Konami was too slow. So technically speaking, Konami never owned Bloody Roar. It was still Hudson. It wasn't until 2023, August 22nd, that they finally got it. Now that we got that out the way, let's talk about what happened in... 2022 to this year 2024 now very obvious combo breaker 2022 2023 2024 bloody world got a lot of eyes on it bloody world got a lot of attention a lot of people online in general are just asking for bloody world to come back almost daily specifically on twitter slash x right now someone from konami is aware of this his name is benjamin kinney He's the director of brand marketing at Konami Digital Entertainment. Tell the story of look how passionate the fans are. So we use you guys to represent your points of views in the meetings and in the boardrooms for all the games, for all the IP, everything from Bloody Roar to suited into Silent Hill, you know, all the titles that you mentioned, Castlevania. It, it doesn't matter, right? I think that is very important to know. Specifically for those that believe that Konami is just ignoring people or for some reason thinking that they're not aware of the demand of people wanting it to return. It's always been there, like even beyond the trademark stuff, even before the trademark stuff was finalized, it was always there and that clip proves it. So that leads into the last discussion of this video. What are we getting? Well, obviously, I don't work for Konami or aiding but I can at least say that I don't think we're getting a new game, though I would like to be wrong, you know, in the sense of I would like to be wrong and the game is actually good. But I can say that we are definitely not getting the Bloody Roar 2 redub. That was a project worked on by Casey Modulo and Kira Buckland. And all I'm going to say about that is... There was definitely attempts made for about four years and one party tried to get in talks to make stuff happen and the other party didn't really uh, acknowledge what was trying to be done. So it's safe to say that Konami has their own plans in mind. So with that being said, I think we're going to be getting a re-release for Bloody Roar. Now, 
Obviously, as mentioned earlier, Bloody Roars 1 and 2 on the PSN store for the PlayStation 3 are legacy releases. So, Hudson Soft and Sony were getting money from it. Now, Sony's only getting money from it, but Konami isn't. So, being as though there's a huge demand for Bloody Roar to return, it only makes sense that they re-release Bloody Roars 1, 2, 3, Primal Fury, Slash Extreme, maybe 4. Now, I believe that Bloody Roar needs this. It's not even a matter of it deserves it, it actually needs this because Bloody Roar 1 and 2 are trapped on the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 3, and you don't want to play the PlayStation 3 PSN version specifically because they suffer from lag. I know BR2 does at least, because I've experienced it. It was my first experience playing Bloody Roar 2 nine years ago on my PlayStation 3. Shoot, I did a video in 2015 talking about how I was getting into the series and stuff. You can go check it out. It was my Bloody Roar 5 video. But anyway, Bloody Roar 1 and 2 are trapped on the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 3's PSN network. And Bloody Roar 3 is trapped on the PlayStation 2. Bloody Roar Primal Fury is trapped on the Nintendo GameCube. Its updated re-release, Bloody Roar Extreme, is trapped on the GameCube in Japan and classic Xbox in America. And Bloody Roar 4 is trapped on the PlayStation 2. So the series is in a desperate need of better accessibility it it needs it okay it needs it we don't even need a new game right now do i think we deserve one yes but start with re-releases please start with re-releases make it easier for people to access these games that are loved here's the kicker though bloody roar extreme has a character in that game that is a guest character from the bloody roar manga Bloody Roar the Fang is a manga owned by Gentosha Comics. So by that extension, Fang the Wolf, the guest character, the character that I play, is owned by Gentosha Comics. Which means that Konami would have to pay a licensing fee to re-release Bloody Roar Extreme because it features their character. I don't think that would be too much of a problem personally compared to Bloody Roar 4. Bloody Roar 4... If you've played that game, and then you play Bloody Roar Extreme 3, 2, and 1, you'll notice that Bloody Roar 4 definitely feels different. It feels clunkier. The reason for that is because Bloody Roar 4 is running on the RenderWare engine. RenderWare is owned by EA. I don't think Konami is going to re-release Bloody Roar 4. Because they have to pay a fee to EA, the bad critical reception, and the bad abysmal sales. I don't see them re-releasing Bloody Roar 4. I don't even see them losing money out of not re-releasing Bloody Roar 4. I just don't see it happening. It's just, there's so many things wrong with that game. And I think it's just better off left alone. I, I'm only okay with it being re-released if it's with the other games it cannot be a separate re-release i just i can't see that i can't see that because i know there's a small percentage of people that actually like that game and there are some interesting things about that game but you know the execution and the the quality of that title is just ugh. here is the thing that is also tricky about bloody roar's future kenji fukuya the director of the bloody roar series yeah, he's still missing. I know that it's possible for series to continue without the main director or producer. But it does make me wonder if he'll come out of the shadows or if it will be made public, you know, that uh, maybe he's dead, you know. So it's... It's it's a interesting but low key scary topic, you know, when it comes to Kenji Fukuya. So anyway, you guys have yourselves a good one. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when.
I'm expecting Bloody Roar to return at a Nintendo Direct or a random Twitter post or a random YouTube trailer upload. Oh, right. Bloody Roar's 30th anniversary is in 2027, so I'm expecting something by then, if not before 2027. Definitely. Without a doubt. I'll see y'all later. Y'all take care. Peace out.